Hi folks, Dr Rowe here. Happy Monday afternoon to you. I wanted to talk about a subject relating to sales. It's an area that I've been involved with for many years as part of the businesses that I run and I can't even give you the figure but you know over the years I've been privileged enough to be involved in generating millions and millions of pounds worth of sales um, globally actually. So I have some experience in this being, being around as long as I have been but also dealing with so many different types of human beings and the decision process that they make when it comes to buying a product or a service. So as much as I love my inspiration and uh, the work that I do in terms of communication and intervention, you know, there's a big part of what we do in business is actually helping people making decisions about buying something that's beneficial to them. So I thought I'd share a few insights with you because I think we're moving into a new era in the way things are sold, particularly online, those of you that are watching this and you want to communicate your message in an effective way and it might be that you're hitting blocks or you're finding it a bit frustrating because you're not necessarily hitting the mark with how you're converting people, how you're creating those sales. I just recently coached somebody who does online webinars and uh, workshops and he went from a, a really low conversion rate of like uh, two, three, four percent um, where he's been now hitting 50%, 30% and he's super excited. And that's simply because of some of the tricks and the techniques that I taught him. And when I say tricks, these are these are really strategies that make him aware of how to deliver his content, which is great value in a way that the other person understands its value. Because it wasn't like he was selling something that for a price that didn't have any value, it actually had immense value. But it was the approach, it was the timing, it was the communication skills, you wrap that up and there's several things that you need to do so I'm going to give you this and hopefully it's going to be a benefit to you hi Annette how are you um, brilliant okay this is great so I'm just seeing a message from Annette there and it's it, this is absolutely right we're at a period right now where it's so important to sell with authenticity if you haven't watched or listened to I think it's just come out actually our latest podcast is just coming out on authenticity you'll love that okay so let me give you some clues here when you're selling something, think about the customer's perception, okay? So this is all about the customer's perception. This is the key thing I wanna get across here. Most people will logic and logic and try and logic their customer into a sale. But the logic of something has no value to the customer unless it has some context, how it fits into their life. Without that context, they can't necessarily justify the purchase. I mean, let me give you an example of, I know, um, I'm trying to think, Let, let's use a, a lawnmower, right? So you're gonna go in logically and start to say, well, this is a great lawnmower. It, you know, it has a, uh, a 600 um, wide cutting capacity and logically that's gonna enable you to do less cuts during the course of you cutting the lawn. And so you might spend a little bit long, uh, less time cutting the lawn logically. And uh, the way the blades are designed, they're self-cleaning, so you'll spend less time there. And somebody goes, all right, that's interesting. But if you put this in context and you say, for example, if you're somebody who's very busy and maybe you've got a family and you value spending more time with your kids than you do cutting the grass, what we've discovered is with this particular product that the average person is saving approximately, let's say 50%, 50% of their time cutting the lawn. Now imagine that you are spending six hours a month cutting your lawns. That means you're saving three hours. What could you do with three hours with your kids? Think about the time you wanted to go to the beach but you couldn't because it was too late by the time you'd finished cutting the lawn. Getting those three hours back gives you an opportunity to go out and spend more time with the kids. So that, that if you like, is a contextual thing. So you're not just giving them the logic of what you're describing with the lawnmower, you're actually giving them context in their own real lives because people want it to feel directly applicable to them. What you don't want them to do is go, oh, so-and-so might like this product. Of course they go off, they don't buy it. So that's the first thing, and I hope this is making sense. The second thing is value versus detail, and as I put this on the screen here for you. So what a lot of people will do is start to describe the detail now of this product. It weighs this much, it folds up, and it can be put away and hung really easily in your shed. Um, 
the blades are easy to replace. It takes two minutes, 57 seconds on average for somebody to replace, and there's all this technical detail. But the problem with the features is the features are not describing the benefits or the value to the customer, right? We've done context, that's slightly different. But now let's say you're somebody that's weighing up Oh, uh, you know, maybe I should just get somebody else to cut the lawn for me. You know, that might save me a bit of time. And, and you say, well, OK, yeah, but how much do you pay somebody to cut the lawn? Maybe it costs you 25 quid for somebody to come and cut the lawn. Well, after they've done 10 cuts, that's 250 quid. And let's face it, during the summer months, the grass grows really quickly. You might be spending 250 quid every couple of months or whatever the stats are for your particular product and service and what people are paying in the, in the marketplace as a comparable yeah so we're putting some value to them on a financial level here versus the benefits and the features sorry so the features here now they're describing the detail so you could say you know what we know about this product is x y and z all the technical details so the product itself is 63 pounds and 55 pence or 65 quid so if you think about it that's like f you could cut the grass um, with your lawnmower in 50% less time, have more time with the kids, and it's a 65 pound purchase. If you're gonna go and get somebody else to come in to save you that time to, so you can have more time with the kids, it's gonna cost you approximately 150 to 250 pounds per month, depending on how big your garden is, if you do the maths on it. Whereas once you bought this product once, you know the blades don't need replacing because we've got these special self-sharpening blades for approximately a year. Imagine how many times you could cut with that same lawnmower. You're gonna save yourself thousands of pounds now you're starting to show them that so they're weighing up the value the context is saving the time against the kids and this is what they want they want real context remember somebody wants a hole they're not looking for a hole what you've got to show them is okay you're after a hole but you need a drill to create the hole does that make sense whereas somebody's thinking oh man i need a six inch hole here or whatever the size of the hole is like that's quite a big hole actually <laughs> i need a six millimeter hole no, what you need is a six millimeter drill. So you have to show them what they need to achieve that end result. All right, so these are the subtleties of the sale. Then you have to use a language that is relatable to them. This is where communication comes in. Let me give an example, okay? Think how much business you've probably lost through just not knowing some of the subtle tricks to communication, subtle techniques to communication, subtle ways to position somebody, to grab their attention, to hold their attention. How is it that most people spend three to 10 seconds looking quickly at an advert and then passing to the next one? Well, if you've got a product or a service that you are pumping out through the internet, through social media, and you're wondering why you're not actually getting the traffic or the business, why, for example, we, we just launched our CWI take the test. We had nearly 500 people take the test. We had a 70%, 75% or more conversion for people taking the test. That's ridiculous. I mean, most people doing this type of thing get a tiny conversion. So how have we managed to do that? With the process of very much what I teach you. So in the same way I'm now saying to you, look, contextually, how much business are you losing by not knowing how to grab people's attention? What if you could move your conversion rate from maybe 10% maybe not to 70% straight away like we've done with the communications test, but what even if you got it to 50%? Now more people are stopping, they're watching your advert, they're listening, they're leaning forward, they're going, ah, okay, I wanna, I wanna listen to this person more. Let me click through to their free whatever it is. Now you've hooked them because you've got great value, but it's, it's about how you languaged it, it's how you articulated it, it's how you hooked them with certain techniques. And this is where we go through the CWI process, we show people how to do that. And most people don't know what the gap is, which is where our test comes in. See, so what I've done there, in the way I'm teaching you, I'm showing you the context here, but also the value, it's a free test. So if you could even win another 10 customers by understanding this from a free test, huge value benefit to you, okay? Logic versus value. So another example, and I'm using language that you can relate to. If I started getting too hyperbola with you, you get confused. So keep the language simple and communicate in such a way that grabs their attention and then finally make it memorable. I don't know what it is you do. I don't know if you sell products, if you're a property investor and you go out and raise money with angels. I don't know if you're selling widgets, gadgets, books, you're writing things, you've got video programs, whatever it is. You may have any one of those, or it might be in a business or a job or whatever, and you've got to sell yourself. So the key thing here is, how would you feel at the end of the year knowing that 40 or 50% of the people you've spoken to have slipped through the net? Imagine that at the end of the year, how much revenue that's generated for you. If you're in a charity, how much money you could have raised for charity or how many lives you could have changed, that suddenly becomes memorable. So to me, communication is the new currency. It's the currency of exchange of ideas. It's a currency exchange of service, of product, of value. 
and that value to you is worth, I know this from my own experience, millions of pounds. Had I not learned this early, I literally wouldn't have made the millions of pounds I've personally made and the product sales have been into the tens of millions if I equate it over the period I've been around. So this is just to say to you that you can do this, um, but you've got to understand this process with your clients. All right, so hopefully this is making sense. So what have we got? Context versus logic, remember that. Value versus the detail, so they understand the value to them. Have the language, keep it simple and communicate effectively. And then finally, make it something they can remember. They go, yeah, I remember that. Consequ consequence is a good way to make it memorable. If this, then that. You don't want that. No, I don't want that. Okay, what do I want? I want to get a better result. Right, here's the solution to that then. So you make it memorable and then you offer them a solution. I hope that's of use to you. I hope it's value. Again, I'm going to talk about this just quickly to wrap this up. Go and take the CWI test. A lot of you cut message back and say, oh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to do it yet. It's a seven-minute test. But the value of that could be uh, you know, a better relationship, better relationship with your kids, business partners, new customers, just feeling better about how you communicate. So it's worth doing it. I'm going to sign off now. Hopefully that was valuable. I've got a meeting to go to in approximately seven minutes. So I have to go and communicate effectively there.